uh, Pace My Race recommendations for marathon running presented by uh, Hakim uh, Bernstein from University College of Dublin. This paper won the, the Best Short Paper Award, so congratulations. So my name, <coughs> sorry, my name is Adam, and I'm going to talk to you today about uh, recommendations for marathon running. So distance running is a mass participation event. Those of you who are here on Sunday might see the Copenhagen Half Marathon. There's 23,000 runners at the start line. <coughs> this is something that's replicated in cities across the world, giving you an idea of how many runners run every year. It's in the millions. A high proportion of these runners will collect data on smartwatches like I'm wearing now. So this is data such as distance and uh, how quickly they ran. So in theory, this makes marathon running an ideal domain for recommender systems. We have lots of runners who are constantly looking to get an edge in their performance, and we have lots of data to generate predictions and to make recommendations. But some of you are probably asking, why recommender systems? So there's a lot of data online, but it's quite hard to get your head around it. So depending on your goals, there might be six or seven different methods that you can follow in order to hit your goal. So which is the right one? And on top of this, we have lots of data being collected, but right now it's only being displayed to the user. So on the right here, we have a Garmin watch, which is displaying the heart rate, pace, and distance to a user. Unless you're an experienced runner, it's very hard to know what to do with this data. Is my heart rate too high, or am I running too fast for this race? So this is where recommended systems come in. Can we use the data to inform training? Can we leverage data to improve performance? And can we use recommended systems to help runners run safer? So for example, to avoid hitting the wall. So what is hitting the wall, and why might want to avoid it? I think this is best explained in a small video. So this is quite an extreme example of hitting the wall. It's when a runner runs out of energy and runs out of muscle glycogen. So while most runners don't hit the wall quite this hard, it's an estimate between 30 and 50% of runners will hit the wall in any given marathon. This is extremely detrimental to finish time, and obviously a situation we want to avoid. And we want to use recommended systems to help runners get through this phase. So thankfully there's been a lot of research done in recommended systems so far. This can be broken down into three key areas, with training, goal setting, and race strategy. So in training, the recommended system takes the place of a recommend, uh, sorry, conventional coach and recommends training sessions that are uh, designed to increase performance and fitness for the athletes. Then there's goal setting, which is a goal time prediction. So many uh, running websites, such as Runners World, have systems online where you can put in a previous performance time and get a goal time on the basis of this. Thousands of runners use this every single year. And lastly, there's race strategy, which comes in the form of a race pacing plan. The idea behind this is to divide your efforts across the race to ma maximize performance in the race. So on the right here, we see how one of these pacing plans might be presented. It's a simple um, uh, band wear around your wrist that tells you when you have to hit various distance milestones in the race. But you might notice that all the work we've looked so far has been focusing on recommendations and predictions that help for the uh, start of the race. The only uh, application we can think of in the race is a crudely predicted finish time that is only actually available to spectators. So what happens if things don't go to plan? So many runners get caught up in the excitement of the opening few kilometers and end up running too quickly. As you can see here, there's no way of adapting this pacing balance, and if you start too quickly, it's suddenly useless. There's no way to adapt the changes, so there's no plan B, and runners are left to fend for themselves, and this means they're much more predisposed to hitting the wall. <coughs> so this is what motivates our work. So we have two aims in our, uh, in our work. We look to improve the in-race finish time prediction, and present this to runners so they can see if they are on target to hit their goal time or not. And secondly, we want to make a recommendation during the race of a personalised strategy to help runners avoid hitting the wall and finish running safely. So in collaboration with Strava, we received uh, anonymised marker data for roughly 13,000 runners. For each of these runners, we had the pace, so how fast they ran, their heart rate, measured in beats per minute, and the cadence, so the number of steps to the <coughs> We collect summary data for each of these features over short, medium and long-term windows at 5 km intervals in the race. So this will be important later on because these features correspond to the efforts and influence that runners are likely to use to describe their own performance. So we fed these features into an XG boost model in order to predict the finish time during the race. And we compare this to a simple baseline which assumes that a runner will run at an even pace throughout the race. So essentially we scale up the speed they're running at now and see how long it will take them to hit the finish time. We see substantial improvements in the early to middle stages of the marathon. Especially the half-hour point, we're over five minutes better than our prediction. 
So we think this improvement is due to our model's ability to predict whether a runner will slow down or not. So obviously this model helps in our first thing, predicting the finish time, but if it can predict the slowdown, it might also be useful in helping us generate recommendations. So to do this, we adapt our model. We predict the, uh, the amount that a runner will slow down rather than the finish time. If a runner is likely to have a large slowdown, we will replan the race accordingly. We're also going to leverage the fact that some experienced runners are going to make decisions about their pacing in order to avoid hitting the wall if they think they might be in danger of doing so. We'll use these as our exemplars. So if we identify a runner that is at risk of slowing down, we will first find similar runners from our list of exemplars using race days at that point. We will then calculate the average pacing adjustments uh, that these runners undertook. We'll adapt these adjustments to match the new expected finish time for our user and finally we present these as a recommendation to the user on a smartwatch or smartphone. So we evaluate these recommendations by looking at the similarity between our recommended pacing plan and the adapt adaptations that our exemplars actually undertook. So we found that the recommended plans corresponded closely to those followed by runners that do adjust their pace. This is good because it means that means our recommend, sorry, it means our recommendations have features that will bring runners safe to the end of the race, and we're quite confident that if we present this to an inexperienced runner, they will finish the race safely. However, it's not enough in this case just to make a recommendation. So if you make a recommendation early in the race, a runner is unlikely to feel fatigued and therefore might completely ignore what we're telling them to do. So we've identified three key facets that we need recommendations to adhere to. So first off, they must be well-timed. We don't want to make, be making recommendations every 100 meters in the race. So we want to make recommendations when runners are evaluating how they've done thus far and maybe making decisions about their pacing going forward. So we do this at key points of the marathon, maybe aid stations, geographical landmarks, or distant milestones, whatever the user point is preferable. We also must be able to explain their recommendations. So we remember back, we use uh, race features to train our model that relates to race features that runners use to describe their performance. Um, this means we can relay the decision made by the model back to the user. So for example, if we identify a heart rate is too high, we can tell them your current level of effort is unsustainable and will slow down before the race, the end of the race. Lastly, we must demonstrate the benefits of recommendations. We do this by showing the expected performance of those who uh, adapt their pace compared to, compared to those who don't. So for example, we might say those who did not adapt their pace slowed by 20 minutes after this point, while those who did adapt their pace only slowed by 5, giving a net benefit of 15 minutes. So we believe that using these hybrid explanations at well-timed intervals, we will, lead, we will get trust and adherence from our runners, which obviously is crucial if we want them to avoid hitting the wall. So behind me now is a quick mock of how this might look. So in the middle we have our new recommended pace of 5 minutes 40 per kilometer. Underneath we have the reason for our intervention. So the runner in this case has been demonstrating the variable pacing which will lead to a form rate breakdown later in the race. And finally we have our benefit of adaptation. So in this case users who did not adjust their pace slow by 7 minutes while those who did adapt their pace slow by 4, giving a net benefit of 3 minutes. Obviously it's still quite complicated for a user late in the race, so we might think of bringing in an audio channel later on. However, if compared to our smartwatch earlier on, we can see it's far better for a re um, recreational runner. Instead of leaving to their own devices and trying to figure out what they're doing based on some very simple data, we give them an exact plan they should follow. That means if they do happen to go out too quickly and stray from their plan, we give them a plan B that they can follow to finish very safely with the minimal amount of um, penalty in their finish time. So just in conclusion, we built a model that predicted finish time in the race and adapt that model to generate recommendations to guide runners safely to the end of the marathon. We also provide meaningful explanations to make sure runners would adhere to these end recommendations. Just in terms of future work, we're going to look to incorporate previous performance data and training data into this model in the future. So we believe that the sooner we can make a recommendation, the smaller the adaptations have to be and the less the runner will actually lose out from having to adapt their pace. And lastly, there's an ongoing user study in our research group through the PaceMap project, and we look forward to sharing these results with you in the future. So with that, I just want to say thank you very much, and I hope you come see our post later on if you're interested.
to ask questions because I'm not very sportive. So. Talk. The uh, question is your model taking into consideration changes in elevation, like the Boston Marathon, is a much hillier run than if you ran in Jacksonville, Florida. So currently it doesn't, but we believe that we can still see how users going to perform based on the heart rate. Um, but that's what we are going to bring in the future. It's going to take in the course topology to say, you know, adapt the things based on maybe there's a hill there so we can see it. We can say, okay, you will slow down here. Of course, we know you're going to speed up again. It's not necessarily due to your current physical state, it's due to the course. So we will bring that in the future. Yeah. Okay. Hello, can any conventional applications of your recommendation? Sorry? Do you plan any conventional applications of your recommendation system? Um, so currently it's just a research project, but I think there is definitely a commercial benefit in this. I think there's a lot of workers who will be interested in a recommendation, such as 1% here. Okay, uh, we have another question over there. Uh, oh, okay, sorry. So is, is this available in like uh, common uh, scenarios as well, like a very, very rapid change in uh, heart rate of a common person, not necessarily a marathon uh, running? Or, like, or, and is it available in some smartwatch already? Uh, so currently the system is not available in a smartwatch. So there is an app available through our research project, so the Pacemark project, which was something similar to this, but again, it's currently not adaptable. Um, so we will be looking to bring this work into that project in the future. Okay, we have one more So, uh, first part of the question is, would this a system like this be allowable for competitive runners? And two, um, if you compare this to, to other approaches based, say, on optimal control techniques. So, I don't think this approach is necessarily that important for the elite <coughs> marathoners. I think it's much more applicable to a recreation runner who maybe finishes in three and a half to maybe five hours. So, I don't see any reason why this wouldn't be allowable. And um, I don't think nobody's going to win an Olympic title off the back of these recommendations. And we're trying to really, uh, we're trying to get, get, bring coaching to people who maybe don't have access to it right now. So I don't see why it wouldn't be allowable. Um, sorry, you just repeat the second part of your question. I forgot what you said. Uh, we haven't compared this off to the control strategy yet. No. Be interested to hear about that later at the poster book. Okay, one last question for you. Um, very interesting work, thank you. Uh, have you thought about uh, what if the recommendation fails? Like, if your prediction is wrong, there is a consequence for example. You can say, claim that you might avoid the possibility of hitting the wall, but if it's wrong, then you're going to increase the chance of hitting the wall. So, because there's some design guideline that you might be want to be honest to say, suggesting that the system can do it can be wrong. You know, that's an interesting point. Um, there's definitely scope there that our recommendations can be wrong, but we are trying to slow runners down, so I think the risk is definitely alleviated. And I think it's possible that runners that hit the wall despite following their recommendations, they are under training anyway, so maybe we're going to too high a goal time. There's only a certain scope that our intervention can take. Now, obviously, the downside might be that we are too cautious and recommend pacing adjustments to those who don't need us. And then that will obviously have a penalty of finish time, so that's what we want to avoid. So that's where the future work is leading to, to make sure that our predictions of whether we will slow down or not are become a lot more accurate. Okay, thanks again.